As a fine, upstanding member of the community, I've always been somewhat fascinated by those who live a life of crime. All I know of it is the uh, voyeuristic take that I get from watching crime on television shows. And of course, many people are pushed into this way of living, not through choice, but through necessity. But what about those who actively pursue a life of crime? What are their motivations? Why do they do it? What do they get out of it? Such is the case of the protagonist in tonight's story, ladies and gentlemen. Another fantastic tale from Dr. Creepin's Vault. Well, my dear friends, a new week is upon us. So once again, I invite you to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. For the better part of 15 years, I was, and still am, a hardened career criminal. Endless nights of partying, drugs, and boozing. Wishing I could blame anyone but myself. Oh, sure, how easy it is to say I hung around with the wrong crowd. Bad influences, yeah, you've heard it all before. However, after years of being in and out of the correctional facilities, county jails and federal prisons, I've come to finally admit I'm the one responsible for where I am in life. There are no excuses such as, oh, my mom was a crack whore, dad was a junkie slash alcoholic. No, nothing like that. Coming from a good, strong Christian family, well, my parents did everything right. Worked hard to provide everything I could ever want. With one being a doctor, the other a high-profile lawyer, well, they were so good to me. Perhaps I just grew up bored. I suppose this all began at a young, impressionable age. At first, it was only petty theft, terrorizing my own neighborhood with friends. Whether it was hitting cars with rocks from slingshots or airsoft guns, well, even cutting random people's cable TV from outside their home, or slicing tires on a car. Yes, I know. A dick move. When you're young like that, you believe you're untouchable. Hell, back then, maybe we were. Quickly, I elevated my crimes from simple shoplifting to finding myself with a stolen handgun, robbing liquor stores. Yeah, I remember my first one. My hands were shaking, afraid for my own life, even with an adrenaline rush. I walk into the cooler area, waiting for the store to empty, then rushing the lone man at the counter. The cashier complied as I threw a bag on the counter demanding the cash. All the money in the bag now. I urge. Oh, back then, I didn't even attempt using a disguise. At 19 years old, I had accumulated enough cash from robberies that I bought a muscle car. It was my dream car. A custom black with white racing stripes. 1969 Super Sport Camaro with a 327 5.4 litre engine. A monster of a vehicle and now my getaway car for every robbery from here on in. Named her Emma. Don't know why, but I've always loved that name. She was very loud, and drew far too much attention. Of course, getting caught wasn't a concern at the time. Live fast, die young. Well, that wasn't the goal, but a way of life. It's not one I'd personally recommend. Rather, it's the one I lead. They say crime doesn't pay. Well, it sure as hell did when I stood behind someone at the ATM, ambushing them after a withdrawal. Of course, I only stalked my victim when they were alone, and generally in nice cars, doing so strictly at night. Now, I never used force or assaulted them in any way, merely using a Sig Sauer P226 9mm as an <laughs> incentive. Worked quite well, I'd say. Holding the gun against their back, I would whisper, Just give me the money and we can all go home. Each time they would be directed to lie down, face first, counting to a hundred before getting up. To be completely honest, I had every opportunity of success. Could have gone to any school of my choice, paid in full by my wonderful parents. But the thrill soon took over that thought. I was an adrenaline junkie. It's the only time I really felt alive. 
almost how people really enjoy watching a horror movie with a jump scare. You know, your body creates the adrenaline as a chemical reaction to your own fear and sudden change. Despite the fact you know it's coming, you always go back for more. Think of how you feel right before a car crash. That's exactly how it was during my robberies. <sighs> what a rush. This may seem egotistical. They say you should never self-diagnose. I just don't think I'm crazy. Sure, I took insane risks. My life was in danger at every turn. Personally, I'm just not convinced. Rather, simply along for the ride. Now, the actions performed by myself and my peers certainly would say otherwise. Friends? You could hardly call them that. We get drunk, fight and even steal from one another. Yeah, an interesting period in my life for sure. So, two years go by as I perfect my craft, becoming even more brazen, no longer only striking at night. I quickly learn many different techniques, begin trying new disguises, constantly switching style and the location of the robberies. I drop one bank in a nice suit and tie carrying a briefcase, approaching the bank teller quietly with a note. Other patrons wouldn't even know anything had happened. Calmly walk out of the bank, parking my car two blocks away. No one would be looking for a man slowly walking to a car in a suit. So, you have to adapt to your environment. Downtown, wear a three-piece. New apartments being built nearby, you wear jeans, reflect a vest and a hard hat. Sometimes I'd wear multiple layers of clothes and a wig. Run from the bank in a back alley. Toss the first set of clothes in a dumpster and casually walk away after stuffing all the money into a sack. Not once did they ever give me a dye pack. Well, if you don't know, a dye pack is a radio-controlled incendiary device used by banks to foil a bank robbery by causing stolen cash to be permanently marked with dye shortly after a robbery. In most cases, a dye pack is placed in a hollowed-out space within a stack of banknotes, usually $10 or $20 bills. This stack of bills looks and feels similar to a real one, with technology allowing for the manufacturing of flexible die packs which are difficult to detect by handling the stack. When the marked stack of bills is not used, it's stored next to a magnetic plate near a bank cashier, in standby or safe mode, ready to be handed over to the bank robber by a bank employee. When it's removed from the magnetic plate, the pack is armed, and once it leaves the building and passes through the doorframe, a radio transmitter located at the door triggers a timer, typically at least 10 seconds, after which the die pack explosively releases an aerosol, usually of dispersed red nine, and sometimes tear gas, intended to destroy the stolen money and mark the robber's body with a bright stain. Well, I had one robbery where I wore two layers of clothes, and underneath the first layer, I had a runner's uniform on. I'd also hidden a running stroller for toddlers nearby. So, when I left the bank and stripped down, all you saw was a man pushing a baby stroller down the street. I'd just hide the money within, and even had a fake baby under blankets. Most of the time, I'd be in and out of the banks in less than two minutes. Well... Bank security has changed a lot. Some banks have two locked security doors now with metal detectors. You can only pass through each door as the teller unlocks them one at a time. After, they can determine you're not a threat. Nor are you armed. More high-definition cameras. Two-inch bulletproof glass, which goes to the ceiling. Even automatic door locks that keep the robber from escaping once inside. So... Years pass, and I continue my exploits. I have a girlfriend now. Well, two, to be exact. One of them a normal girl with a regular job. After being with her for years, trying to hide what I really did for a living, well, it just got boring. The other I met more recently. She, however, is quite different. A stripper with an exotic lifestyle. Similar to that of mine. Well, without all the high-value theft, that is. 
I kept them both in the dark about everything. Now, let me tell you something. Women have needs. I love them. But good God, are they hard to please. Always wanting more. And that meant I had to up the ante. More crimes. More stealing. More brazen attempts. I began sleeping in stores with banks inside them, breaking into the banks late at night, and then leaving from the rooftops. Hell, you could practically live in them if you had nowhere to go. So many places to hide. Furniture, food, entertainment. Everything, really. But I had places to be. Women to keep happy. Weeks pass, as the pressure is weighing down on me. This double life growing increasingly difficult to maintain. God, I hate lying. <laughs> I know, sounds crazy. A criminal with a conscience? Wild, right? How can I justify damaging businesses, hurting people mentally and financially? Lying about it, on the other hand, well, that's what I had trouble with. Which really became a problem. Ultimately, deciding to break it off with both of them. Feeling free, but somewhat afraid as they're each furious with me now. I even moved just to get away from them. I suppose I'm always running. Settled in a new undisclosed location, laying low with the money I've saved up. All stolen, of course. I live off what I have for a while, but wanting one last score. Spending months scoping out different banks. This is going to be the big one. Now, there's one I really like in a very nice end of town. I decide on this large bank nearby a highway overpass, but right in front of a large wooded area. This particular bank has a vault with safety deposit boxes. There's an interesting layout here. I learn the layout after becoming a potential customer, renting a deposit box and routinely paying a visit once a week. Each time writing down notes and even drawing my own version of a schematics onto blank paper. When you walk in, there are rows of safety deposit boxes on each side of the vault from wall to wall. There's another row in the center of the room. Call it luck, or oh, piss poor design. I notice there's a corner of the room with lock boxes that connect to each other, blocking view from anyone's sight. There's also nothing behind it. That's the perfect amount of room for me to stand up or kneel down and not be seen. Continue to go there each week, every time learning something new, such as the location of the support beams in the ceiling. Hmm. Are the tiles removable? Hmm. Turns out they are. Bringing a bag with me, appearing to insert contents in my specific safety deposit box. I hide my tools in the false ceiling. Crowbars, log-picking instruments, even small battery-powered drills, hammers, and the like. Deciding to wait until there's a federal holiday. On my last visit to the vault, I plan to uh, stay the night. Well, two nights. I bring food, bottles of water, and an alarm clock. I'm wearing a maintenance uniform. Hiding in my spot in the corner behind log boxes, Wearing my watch. It feels like forever. 5.30 comes. I hear the manager locking the vault. I'm on a time limit. I must get started immediately. The vault will open at exactly 9am, two days from now. It cannot be opened before then, as it has a time lock on it. I raise myself from the corner now, on top of the deposit boxes moving the false ceiling out of the way, grabbing each tool. I start with a lock-picking set, which proves to be difficult, as there are two locks per box. So I move to the all-so-primitive hammer and metal stake, <laughs> forcing them open. I count approximately 300 boxes to open, hammering away for hours, collecting my loot, going through everything, separating jewellery, money and gold. From the random paperwork, that is. I take a well-needed break. Oh, my arms are completely sore. 
out of breath and exhausted, opening a bottle of water, eating a snack, looking around at all the damage caused so far. Damn it, there's so much more to do. Leaning up against a row of steel boxes, I doze off. Awakened by a noise, frantically checking my watch. Oh, I've slept for four hours. Jumping up, grabbing the hammer and metal stake, getting back to work, switching arms every so often. I'm about one third of the way done, frustrated as many of these are empty. I have to keep it together and remember every step of the plan. The next day comes, and I've got them all broken and pried open, leaving that which I don't want or need. Personal belongings are useless to me. Though nice trophies, they're easily traceable. Now, with two bags full of loot, I plant fake evidence. Random hair samples I'd found. I wore shoes two sizes too big, even grabbed a soda can from the trash of the bank and just left it lying there hoping they would think it's an inside job. Doing my best to close back all the doors so the damage isn't completely obvious. I have everything ready. Back in the corner, hiding. Waiting. It's almost 9am. The vault will be opening soon. I make a phone call to the bank manager, informing them the maintenance guy is coming. They're expecting me, as I'd sabotaged their systems earlier. I exit my spot about 9.20, leave the vault, both bags in hand. Wearing my maintenance uniform, calmly walking out of the bank. <sighs> okay, you're back online now, I say. I'd park my car about a mile away, in a parking garage. Arriving back to my car, I toss my bags in and drive away. I drive to a storage unit that I pay for. Oftentimes, after a robbery, I would take my car there. I have a mattress, a chair, and books, so I can hide out until the heat dies down. Opening each bag, counting, and still sweating from the nerves. Terrified I'd made some sort of mistake. Gee, I'm exhausted. Barely slept much in the two days I was inside the vault. So, I pass out for a while. Leave the area and get a bite to eat. The TV's playing at this restaurant. I notice a reporter interviewing someone. Looking closer, I realize it's the bank I'd just robbed. There's a police lieutenant being questioned on TV. Hey, could you turn that up, please? I ask nicely. Lieutenant, there are signs of a forced entry. Was this an organized crime ring or gang? Was the vault compromised? She says, holding the mic. At this time, we know very little. There seems to be some evidence left behind. Right now, we have no suspect. Our best forensic guys are in there now, working the case. The investigation will continue until the individuals are found. We've estimated approximately $2.4 million in valuables were stolen. That's all for now. Thank you, he explains. Eating my burger... I look down, smiling, enjoying my meal. I spit out my food, trying not to make a scene. Holy shit, I think to myself, feeling smarter than everyone else. Those of you that work nine to five every day are schmucks. Laughing to myself. <laughs> Good luck with your investigation, assholes. Bored out of my mind after six months laying low not drawing any attention. I once again start living my life as I have before. Bars, booze, women and drugs. Living fast, blowing money like crazy, buying everything I could. I still have most of the money. Figured it couldn't hurt to have a little fun. A few more months pass. I grow my beard out and get long hair as well, as I've been doing since I committed my last robbery. Starting to notice everywhere I go, there are now wanted posters of me plastered throughout the city. <laughs> Even saw myself on TV. Fortunately, I don't look like that at all, or not exactly. That picture of me, clean-shaven, and many years ago from an arrest when I was 18. 
So, they know my name. Have my picture. I live on the outskirts of town. Paying cash so I won't be traced. Wondering how they learned it was me. I left fake DNA samples. I was very careful. Even wore gloves. I had to have made a mistake somewhere. But how? I was so meticulous in my planning and execution. Staying in the area. Monitoring their investigation from a safe distance. The now infamous Friday Night Bandit. Will I strike again? <laughs> Watching news reports every other day. Ooh, there's a massive manhunt for me. Hard to tell if they're getting close. I'm sure they already have an APB and will be on the lookout for me as well. Oh, points bulletin. Typically contains information about a wanted suspect who is to be arrested or a person of interest for whom law enforcement officers are looking for. Time to go on a run. Gathering my immediately needed things, I pack up my car and move out of state. Looking for a place to stay, a bit further into the woods out in the country. Being a criminal, I have contacts who are, well, let's say, on the other side of the law. One in particular. Matt is a document forger. He creates fake passports, ID cards, and other important documents. I phone him up for his services. Meet him the next day. It's a bit of a drive. Take a new photo for the IDs. Obtain a great name. Matt chose this one. <laughs> Jesse James. How clever, I thought. Collect the rest of the paperwork Matt made for me. Pay the man. And add in a tip for the fast work. Leaving his humble abode and heading towards my new place I'd acquired recently. I keep glancing at my new driver's license and laughing. <laughs> I look ridiculous. Long hair everywhere and crazy beard. Even formed a smile worthy of DDP. Ah, hell with it. It's good enough. Continue driving until arriving at home. I make something to eat and start watching TV. Getting settled in, just relaxing. Popping back a few cold ones, watching a movie. I hear people and loud commotion outside. What the hell? I don't live near anyone. God, why is that? <laughs> Standing up quickly, looking out the window. My house is surrounded. Police uniforms and FBI in every direction. My back door is busted open, yelling and screaming from every room. Get down now! Tear gas thrown inside. I fall to the ground. Guess the jig is up. I surrender peacefully, knowing I won't survive a firefight with the authorities. I'm held down and handcuffed. The house is full of agents and officers, searching every room, guns drawn. Clear! One man shouts. They eventually find my loot. Captain, in here. I found it, another man yells. A few moments pass. I'm sitting on my couch being questioned. Where's the rest? This isn't all of it, the man asks. I look up and say, with a stern expression on my face, I spent it all. He glares at me with a questionable look. Sarge, it's approximately $300,000, I hear one of them say. Now, being hauled off to the back of a squad car, I ask the arresting officer. So, I'm curious. How'd you find me? Come on, be honest. He laughs, looking in the rearview mirror at me. <laughs> you really want to know? We tracked your cell phone. After gathering enough evidence against you, the judge signed off on a trace. Receiving permission from your phone carrier, he explains. My head falls forward, chin hitting my chest. Embarrassed, I don't say another word. Thinking to myself, how stupid could I have been? Everything was planned so well, a simple cell phone brought me down. All because I forgot to buy a throwaway phone you can pay cash for. The officer and I are due to arrive at the police station soon. Just before we pull in, 
I ask him seriously. You know they only found some of the money, right? Let me go free. I'll give you the rest. Two million dollars. Tell them I assaulted you and I escaped. He lifts his head for a moment and thinks. After a few minutes, he speaks. Nah. I have a promotion coming soon. Bringing you in should help. And besides, I like arresting the bad guys. He says with a smile. Great. Had to be him. A freaking boy scout. At the station, I'm booked in. Fingerprinted and a new photo taken of me. My court date comes as I await in my cell. I'm found guilty on all counts and sentenced to 15 to 20 years with no possibility of parole. Now I'm going to spend the next part of my life in prison. The transfer commences as they haul me off to my new home. They place me in C block. Currently, I have no cellmate. For the first year and four months or so, I'm on my best behavior. No problems at all. Even score a job in the prison metal shop. After a few months of gaining the trust of the civilian that runs it, I talk to him daily, even befriend the guards in that area. I play chess with them. Tell them I want to do some carving so I can take pieces from my board. Contraband is strictly prohibited in prison. However, I slip under the radar. Always pleasant, on good behavior and cooperative with them. They let it slide. I carry a sack on my shoulder when I leave the shop. Guard asks, <laughs> making more pieces tonight? I smile and nod. He motions for me to come through. I'm nervous and jittery. Little does he know, I've been hiding small pieces of steel in my bag and have been hiding tools in my cell for months now. I use the shop to sharpen my small metal stake. Slowly but surely, I begin cutting into the concrete surrounding the bars of my window cell. I know if I can take out the whole box, I can fit through there. Pebbles come off of the walls as I dig. so. Each time I have to flush the debris down the toilet. Another problem I have is it'll be pretty damn obvious when they conduct a cell search that the wall has been tampered with. So, I create a putty using water, toothpaste and toilet paper. After weeks of doing this, I get it to the right color and thickness so it matches the wall. I use the putty to replace the spots along the barred window that could be compromised or easily seen. Eventually, getting it hollowed out. I notice there's a rebar in the wall between the concrete holding the other bars together. Using my sack that I often carry with me to my prison job in the metal shop, I conceal a stolen, sharp handsaw blade. It was being thrown out as it was partially broken. I drop it down into my bag. After work was done, I'm in line for a pat-down search. Damn, I don't know this guard. He's staring me down. Just then, one of the guys I do know smiles and waves me through. A huge relief washes over me. I pass by and head to my cell. Night comes, and I'm now using the stolen saw blade. I'd fashioned a handle from old bed sheets so I won't cut myself while sawing into the metal bars. It's louder than I thought. I only work at night as the guards do less rounds in C-Block. So, I have more time to work in my cell between bunk checks. One bar is cut. I slowly work throughout weeks as it's tedious to get through them all. I don't sleep much as I'm normally up most of the night cutting the bars. Putting the blocks back in place and constantly applying the putty to conceal any damage. So far, none of them have noticed anything when doing a cell search as I have hidden all my tools inside of the window where the broken bars are. Closer and closer, the day is coming. Still planning my escape. I'm on the top floor, so when I make it through the window, I'll have to drop down onto the nearby roof. The whole window unit comes out in one piece. 
I've been cutting all the bars that were holding the unit in. I've finished cutting all the bars. There's two fences I need to clear. Each one with barbed wire on top. And an armed guard who drives around the perimeter in a truck. I wait until nightfall and create a makeshift person on my prison bed, using clothes and toilet paper and a few sheets to create the illusion an inmate is sleeping, even putting hair on it to match that of mine, which has been cut short now. I remove the window unit and put it aside. Dropping down onto the roof below, I grab the window and put it back in place, wearing a dark blanket over my clothes that I'd fashioned earlier. Now down on the bottom level, in a field of grass. Staring at the first fence, I go at it with my blade tearing through it easily. Seeing headlights approaching, I drop down to the ground. The truck passes slowly as normal. I squeeze through the first fence with ease, knowing they could be back at any minute. Cut through the second fence as fast as possible. I am out. Running into the nearby woods, adrenaline pumping, being cut by trees and falling several times, hitting rocks, knowing every step counts. At 0600, everyone will be up for breakfast. It won't be long before they discover I'm gone. Finding an old couple's home, I break in, take their truck and money, cutting the phone lines in the house and locking them in a room. I'd buried the rest of my money I'd stolen in the woods by the last home I lived in, along with my passports and IDs. It's about 26 miles away from where I'm at. The local police will no doubt be setting up a dragnet at any moment. I have to get my money and get the hell out of the area. It's too risky to hang around for long. Heart racing, trying not to fall asleep as I've been awake for days now. I've gone back to my old place and dug up everything. Now, on the road heading south. It might be hard to get into the States, but it's easy as hell to leave it. I'm using a car I bought with cash. Dumped the stolen truck, as I'm sure it's plastered all over the news, as is my photo. In prison, I'd learned which countries have no extradition treaty signed with the USA. Not my first choice. But I learn Cuba is one of them. Time's running out. I have about two million dollars left. I'm on the run. The race is on. I'm almost to West Palm Beach, Florida. Gonna buy a boat and head to Havana. Will the police find me before I cross the border? Or will I outsmart them and become a very wealthy free man? <laughs> Catch me if you can. So, another fantastic story from Bearded Veteran there. I've uh, been doing a lot of his stories lately, but I like it. Uh, mixing things up here on the channel a little bit. Giving you some different stories every time you tune in. So, thoughts and feelings in the comments below the video. I'll do my best to join in the chat. Uh, special shout out to Sexy Grandma Darkness. Where are you, my dear? We miss you. We all hope you're safe and doing well. Okay, well, that's it for tonight. But I, of course, will be back again in a couple of days from now. So... Drop by and join me again, will you? Yes, you will, won't you? I know you will. Okay, until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And 
importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>